Controlling the tongue is a very serious struggle. The ease with which we may find ourselves lying, cursing, arguing, or swearing is a test of our faith. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, recognized this difficulty when he said, A man may say something that he thinks harmless, and for it he will fall into the depth of hell for 70 autumns. This hadith is very scary. In the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, how many words do we utter without fully considering their impact? The consequences of our speech, both in this world and the hereafter, are very significant. Allah wants us in the Quran, مَا يَلْفِذُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيدٌ Meaning not a word does he or she utter, but there is a watcher by him ready to record it. The sins of the tongue is not limited to gossiping. There are so many of them. From them are lying, ridiculing or mocking others, cursing, giving false oaths, etc. That is why if we are able to overcome the struggle, then inshallah we should anticipate Jannah. For the Prophet wasallam has told us, whoever can guarantee the chastity of what is between his two jaw bones and what is between his two legs, that is his tongue and his private parts, I guarantee paradise for him. The sins of the tongue often sneakily weave themselves into our conversations, taking us by surprise. Lying may start as a small distortion of the truth to avoid inconvenience, while cursing and swearing can slip out in moments of anger or frustration. As for arguing, what could start as seemingly harmless in the pursuit of knowledge can transform into heated disputes, damaging relationships, and sowing discord within communities. One of the reasons the sins of the tongue could be a struggle is because as human beings, we are naturally emotional beings. In moments of anger, frustration, or excitement, our emotions can override rational thinking and we could see regrettable things without thinking of the consequences. Take lying, for example. It is so easy to fall into this habit. We like to get our way out of almost everything. We like to get out of trouble. We like to make ourselves look good and to protect our self-image or to gain certain advantages. And the list goes on and on, especially now with social media. Someone will sit on the other end and concoct stories about someone and will just click and share without thinking of any consequence. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Meaning it is enough falsehood for someone to speak of everything he hears. This is a sahih hadith. Not everything that we hear deserves to be repeated. It is not the Quran. Even hadith needs authentication because people nowadays post fabricated hadith. Then arguing abusively and ruthlessly. This has ruined a lot of beautiful relationships. We engage in arguments due to factors such as ego, the desire to prove oneself right, lack of patience, or the inability to accept our differences. On this, the Prophet wasallam said, I guarantee a house in Jannah for one who gives up arguing, even if he is in the right, and a house in the middle of Jannah for one who abandons lying, even when he drew him, and a house in the highest part of Jannah for one who makes his character excellent. Other sins of the tongue we need to fight hard is how we curse, left, right, and center. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, The believer does not insult others, he does not curse others, he is not vulgar, and he is not shameless. We will now give some ways how we can be able to restrain our tongues with the help of Allah. Number one, reminders. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Meaning, but continue to remind, for certainly reminders benefit the believers. We need to remind ourselves of the consequences of falling prey to our tongues regularly through listening to lectures, reading write-ups, and so on. Man by his nature is forgetful. Do we want Allah to record us in his sight as liars? Let us remind ourselves of the hadith. And beware of lying, for lying leads to wickedness, and wickedness leads to hell. 
A man may continue to tell lies and endeavor to tell lies until he is recorded with Allah as a liar. Number two, let's train our hearts to get used to making excuses and seeing the good in others. We need a pure heart to have a good tongue because the tongue is the mirror of our hearts. Eventually, ugly speech will be completely unnatural to a tongue that belongs to a heart that is purified. Number three, fasting. Increase your days of fasting, for fasting by its nature teaches restraint. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us in a hadith, "Man lam yada qawla zur wal amal bihi wal jahal, fa laysa lillahi hajatun an yada ta'amahu wa sharabahu." Meaning, whoever does not give up false statements and evil deeds and speaking bad words to others, Allah is not in need of his giving his food and drink. Number four, let us change our surroundings. We are upon the religion of our friends. If we keep friends that don't try to keep away from the sins of the tongue, even after being reminded, then we will also keep doing the same. Keep good company and keep us yourself busy with good things so that our tongue finds very little opportunity to engage in baseless conversations. Number five. Let's learn to enjoy silence. The more silence we practice, the less we'll fall into sins of the tongue. Let's listen to beneficial audios, read books, and do a lot of pondering. The Prophet ﷺ has said, وَمَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَسْمُدْ Meaning, and whoever believes in Allah and the last day should speak what is good or keep silent. Number six not to talk when we are angry. When we are angry, we will definitely say things we will regret. That is why the Prophet wasallam advised us not to get angry. Let us train ourselves in moments of heart to keep seeking refuge from the devil. Number eight, the fear of being a munafiq. For me, this fear keeps me in shock when I'm tempted to say something that is untrue. I remember how the Prophet wasallam described the munafiq in a hadith, saying, when he speaks, he lies. Number nine, dua. We need Allah's intervention. Let us learn this dua. Allahumma, tahir qalbi min al-nifaq, wa tahir a'bali min al-riya, wa tahir lisani min al-kadib. Meaning, O oh Allah, purify my heart from hypocrisy, and purify my action from shuraf and purify my tongue from lying. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would also say, Allahumma inni as'aluka qalban salima wa lisanan sadiqa. O oh Allah, I ask you for a pure heart and a truthful tongue. And I will end with this hadith narrated by a tirmidhi that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ma'ad, may Allah be pleased with him after teaching him some of the laws of Islam. Shall I not tell you what is the foundation of all that? Mu'ad said, Of course, O Prophet of Allah. He took hold of his tongue and said, Control this. I said, O Prophet of Allah, will we be held responsible for what we say with it? He said, May your mother be bereft of you, O Mu'ad. Will the people be thrown into hell on their faces or on their noses for anything other than the harvest of their tongues? Subhanallah. Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give us the ability to only say that which is pleasing to him. Amen. If you have benefited from this video, kindly share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also support the organization by getting yourself or a living on something nice from our charity shop. May Allah reward you as you do so.